Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the second lecture of our course, Introduction to Linguistics. In this class, or in this lecture, we are going to talk about animals and human language, the differences between animals and human language. Uh, so, I would like to begin with raising these two important questions. Is it possible that a creature, any creature, what I mean by creature here is obviously uh, non-human, uh, such as uh, animals or any other primates. So, is it possible that a creature could learn to communicate with the humans using uh, language to be a similar uh, kind of a creature to a human being? Uh, the second question, does human language have uh, properties that make it so unique to be learned by other creatures? So these two important questions hopefully will be answered, uh, uh, or at least you will get some thoughts and some, uh, let's say, uh, answers, yes, uh, at the end of this class. So that's basically what we are going to focus on today in this lecture. Uh, I will start by talking about communication and the distinction between two concepts that we may use and refer to in during our communication. These two types of, uh, we can say, communications are communicative signals and informative signals. So what do they mean? In fact, communicative signals happens when someone intentionally intentionally so this is a key word so if something or if uh, if something happens uh, it happens when someone intentionally use language to tell this person or that person something okay intentionally for example and here I'm, I'm uh, I've, I've taken this example from Yule's book the study of language I'm one of the applicants for the vacant position of senior brain surgeon at the hospital. So this is considered as uh, this is um, uh, this is considered uh, as to be intentionally communicating something. So here we have this is an intentional uh, uh, we have an intentional message. So the uh, the speaker wants to or, or, or has already addressed something uh, in an intentional way. Unlike the other type of communication, which is called informative signal, okay? And obviously here, uh, the informative signals are based on uh, uh, unintentionality. So it happens when someone may become inform informed about you through signals that you have not intentionally sent. So the, the, uh, the receiver might... Uh, understand what you want to say uh, uh, indirectly or inten uh, in an intentional way. For example, if someone uh, uh, someone might note that you have a cold just because you have sneezed. So because you have just sneezed, the other person or the uh, the receiver will understand that you have got cold. Okay. So this is informative. So you. Don't get confused. You need to be a, you must understand the differences between communicative and informative. I repeat again, communicative is based on intentionality, whereas informative is based on unintentionality. Okay. So both of animal communication and human language are considered to be means of intentional communication Yet, a human language is still has it, it, uh, it still has a very special uh, properties. Despite that, both languages, if we can, if we if we consider the animal communication a type of language, the human language is still considered to be a, a kind of special language that may not exist with other creatures or primates. So, 
Properties of a human language. Humans are able to reflect on language and its uses. And again, this is one of the this is one of the special things. So this is one of the uh, features of humans. They have the ability. They have the capacity and capability to reflect on language and its uses. Unlike non-humans. So without this ability, the human wouldn't be able to reflect on properties of human language. So what about these properties? In fact, we have five main properties which distinguish, which distinguishes a human language uh, uh, from other forms of languages. These are displacement, arbitrariness, productivity, cultural transmission, and, du uh, and duality. So let's let's start by explaining the first property, which is displacement. What does displacement mean? Displacement allows language to uh, language users to talk about things and events not present in the immediate environment. So they can, for example, human beings can talk about things or events which will happen in the future or about issues that have already existed and happened in the past. Indeed, displacement allows us to talk about things and places whose existence we cannot even be sure of. So we can speculate. We, as human beings, can talk about events, issues that we are not sure of. And this is a, 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 a feature of a human language. Uh, what about the second one, or the second, uh, the second properties of a human language? That is arbitrariness. Arbitrariness means randomness. Okay, it means randomness. There is no natural connection. There is no association between the linguistic form and its meaning. Okay, uh, this connection between form and meaning is based on is is just an arbitrary connection so this connection is is arbitrary is just an it's just a, a random connection some words in english seem to be less arbitrary such as crash and slurp while at the same time some words may be more arbitrary than others the third properties of uh, of human language is productivity or it can be, uh, or sometimes it's, it's referred to as creativity or open-endedness. So what does productivity mean? Productivity means, or it refers to uh, humans, or hu yeah, humans as being able to produce unlimited number of words, infinite linguistic resources. They can keep creating different linguistic resources so they are not fixed with certain references so it means that the potential number of utterances of spoken words for example in human language is infinite is unlimited unlike the communication system of other of other creatures like for example chimpanzees and we are going to talk about some of the uh, experiments which were done to a number of chimpanzees in uh, just uh, in uh, in some slides uh, just uh, uh, after we finish talking about the properties of language so animal communication lacks a productivity which can be described as fixed reference so these two words fixed reference are very important since they can distinguish between human and non-human language Human language is not fixed reference. Humans are creative enough, are smart enough to create unlimited number of linguistic resources, unlike uh, other creatures, which they have a fixed reference. The fourth properties of uh, of of uh, of human language is cultural transmission and in this property as you may notice uh, we want to emphasize on the role of culture so we 
in, in learning any language, we cannot avoid or we cannot ignore the role of culture. Culture must, is always, uh, must always be thought of as a major medium of learning language. So language is acquired through a culture with other speakers not from, not or rather than from parental genes. Okay? So we can't necessarily guarantee that a language will be acquired or learned just because we inherit it from uh, parents. Okay, there must be a culture, there must be a communication with others. So through this medium of communication, language can be acquired. Humans are born with some predisposition. What I mean by predisposition is uh, they they are born with some innate abilities to acquire language in general sense, okay? But not born with the ability to produce utterances that, that, uh, in specific language such as English, but rather to acquire the first language as children in a culture, in a culture. So human beings are born with this capacity, okay, of producing or of learning a language, but they must be they must live in a certain community, in a certain environment where they can reinforce this ability or capacity of learning a language. So non-humans are born with a set of specific signals that are produced instinctively. So here we are talking about non-humans, other creatures other than humans. They are born with a set of specific signals that are produced instinctively. And this would be, we can connect this or we can link this with the previous point that uh, non-humans are born with fixed reference, okay? They lack the productivity. Okay, so, so far we covered four important points about the properties of language. I repeat them very quickly. We have displacement, we have arbitrariness, productivity, and cultural transmissions. These four properties are, uh, let's say, some of the properties which can distinguish human language uh, from other non-humans. Okay, what about talking animals? Can humans really communicate with none I mean with animals is it possible or not possible well for that purpose uh, there were a, a number of experiments uh, conducted by a number of researchers and uh, as a result of this we uh, conc we uh, we uh, or uh, one of the results that researchers have come out that some spoken languages are directed by humans to animals, okay, obviously, as we see in uh, circus animals, which means that humans, uh, sorry, animals have the ability, have the, uh, the potential to learn humans, okay, but not, not in its uh, full picture or not in its full image. Uh, as I said, there were a number of experiments conducted on uh, uh, animals, and uh, most of these experiments were uh, most were done on uh, chimpanzees, uh, gorillas, and apes. So, in one of these experiments, uh, in an experiment regarding teaching a chimpanzee to use a human language, uh, Lola and uh, Winthrop Killig reported that the chimpanzee, which they call, which they call it Gua, had the ability to understand nearly 100 words, which is good. But at the same time, the chimpanzee, this chimpanzee, Gua, didn't manage to produce any one of them. I mean, uh, uh, he didn't manage to use them in context. He he managed to understand these words, but he didn't manage to produce or to utter these, these words.
سوري اوكي وي هاف اولسو انذر اكسبيرمنتس وي هاف اولسو انذر اكسبيرمنتس Sorry for this. Okay, so there was also another experiment was done by uh, Catherine and Hayes to teach a chimpanzee, which they call it uh, Vicky, uh, a human language. So they, these two researchers, uh, managed to teach this chimpanzee a human language. They tried to, they attempted to teach him the human language. Catherine and Hayes spent five years of training this, sh this, this chimpanzee to say some English words. So what happened? In fact, Vicky managed to produce some basic words such as mama, baba, cub, etc. Okay, only these basic words. Okay, so he didn't, he didn't manage to produce more sophisticated words. From these experiments and others, it was concluded that non-human primates don't have the ability, the physical and structural ability to articulate the sounds used in speech, simply because they don't own, they don't have the vocal, the vocal tract or the vocal cords as in human beings. So chimpanzees, apes and gorillas can all communicate with a wide range of vocal cords. They can understand these, uh, uh, I mean, wide range of vocal cords, but they just cannot make speech sounds like humans, simply because they don't have, as I said, this uh, ability. They don't own they don't, they are not born with this uh, vocal tract. From different experiments, it was concluded that the chimpanzee's behavior is viewed as a type of conditions, a conditioned response to cues provided by human trainers. So if they got the, uh, uh, the let's say the stimulus or the, what they want to get, okay, they can respond. For example, if they get food, they will be able, they will, they will uh, respond, okay? So we can consider food as a cue, okay, to respond. Herberts, Herberts also concluded that chimpanzees are clever creatures who produce certain type of behaviors to get rewards, which can make sophisticated tricks. I think, and uh, 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 with other creatures, unlike chimpanzees, they may not be, uh, they may not uh, even understand the vocal cords, okay, whereas with, chimp with chimpanzees, okay, they have the ability to understand the humans, uh, the humans calls, for example, or the vocal cord, the vocal, uh, the vocal calls, simply because they are clever creatures, okay, uh, whereas other animals, which might be considered as less smart or, or, less, uh, or less clever than chimpanzees, they might not even understand the basic words like mama, baba, and cub. Some, uh, some chimpanzees were found uh, uh, capable of, talking, uh, of taking part in interaction with the humans, okay, through using a simple system by humans. So the humans have the ability to teach and to train chimpanzees, okay, because chimpanzees have this, as I said, ability. They can partially interact with human beings through a simple system, either of sounds or words, uh, etc. Chimpanzees didn't perform linguistically on a level comparable to a human child, of course, and that's what we uh, have just uh, mentioned now that they are smart, okay, but, but their level of smartness cannot be 
uh, uh, comparable, cannot reach the, the, the level of smartness in, in, in children. The behavior of two year of a two-year uh, human child interacting with a caregiver is an example of using language. We observe very similar behavior from, chim uh, from, uh, from chimpanzees when they interact with the humans. Accordingly, we can say that in both cases, we observe participants using language. Yet, this, and this is a very important distinction between the, the, the difference between the the, the term of using language in children and in chimpanzees. There is still a difference in term of using language between humans and non-humans. Yet, there is a difference in term, uh, as I said, in term of using language between humans and non-humans. Such meaning of using a language by humans is the capacity to develop a complex system of sounds and structures which allow users to use very extended a wide range of discourse uh, 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 containing infinite number of novel utterances in the game these are as we have just looked at some of the properties of of human beings here we have discourse containing infinite and what we mean by infinite is unlimited number of novel utterances and we can refer to this as a productivity or creativity so this is only a feature of human language not animals for example language it's in this more comprehensive uh, comprehensive and productive sense we can say that language is uniquely human so it depends on our understanding of language it depends on what we mean by language. Do we mean it? Do we mean by language the form of comprehensive, sophisticated uh, language, or just a simple language? If we mean it, if we mean by language uh, uh, the uh, the simple form of language, so we can say yes, humans and non-humans can use a similar language. Whereas if we mean by language. Uh, the uh, the uh, the complex system of sounds and structures so in this sense we can surely say that language is just a uniquely human it's just a special feature of human beings who have the capacity to produce sounds now I come to the end of my lecture too I hope you enjoy it and I uh, highly recommend each one of you to read the, uh, the chapter, which is chapter 2. I try to summarize most of the important uh, issues uh, which I find interesting. Uh, but in order to get the full picture of this chapter, as I said, I, have, uh, I recommend each one of you to look at the chapter, try to read it, and read the examples. See you in lecture three. Wish you all the best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.